Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel, baby. Okay, guys, this is a bio nanogenomics update video. So, there's a lot of studies that I've been looking through, just all the latest updates. Make sure you stay to the end, and I hope you enjoy the video. Please remember, none of this is financial advice for entertainment only. First of all, I'll show you the news that I'm most excited about. So, this is a special issue optical genome mapping in human neurogenetic diagnostics new advances and future trends. This little article or this special issue coming out of UCL, which is the University College London, one of the best universities in the world, coming from a Dr. Stephanie Ethiomio. You may have seen her before in some of my videos, but here she is with a sapphire system right behind her shoulder. So before I give you any information, I'll let you look at this. In the QS World University rankings, it's ranked 8th in the world, the University College of London. And this doctor has issued some special issue information. She has said, Dear colleagues, in recent years, optical genome mapping has developed into a highly promising method of detecting large-scale structural variants in human genomes. It affords an effective technology for the detection of structural variants, especially those that are mosaic, since these remain difficult to detect with current next-generation sequencing technologies and with conventional chromosomal microarrays. Oh, here we go. It promises to be feasible as a first-line diagnostic tool, permitting insight into a new realm of previously unknown variants. Then she said, however, due to its novelty, little experience with optical genome mapping is available to infer the best practices for its application or to clarify which features cannot be detected. So this special issue is to contribute and expand the knowledge of applying optical genome mapping in genetically undiagnosed neurological patients, which will provide scientists with a useful collection of recent updates and advances in the fields. They also want to stimulate discussion and talk about the use and adoption of optical genome mapping for clinical diagnostics in genetic neurological disorders. So she's asking for lots of original research articles and reviews, and some of the research areas they're particularly interested in is repeat disorders, genetic epilepsies, neurodevelopmental disorders, and movement disorders. So she believes it promises to be feasible as a first-line diagnostic tool. If it is used as a first-line diagnostic tool, that's going to be some cash moolah. She's looking for particular research in those disorders we just mentioned. If we look at epilepsy alone, they're saying genetic epilepsy, right? And according to different research companies, we don't know what the diagnostic market is because they're saying the whole epilepsy market, including treatment, but they're saying the whole epilepsy market could be worth between 590 million US dollars all the way up to 2.1 billion by 2029-2030. So diagnostics and genetic diagnostics is a segment of that market. Could it be used in diagnosis for that? The repeat expansion disorders is expected to grow at 13.5% compounded annual growth rate between 2022 and 2030. It's mentioned lots of different companies getting involved, including Pfizer, CRISPR, GSK, Glaxo, so Smith Klein. And a little brief summary here. It says that repeat expansion disorders are a group of inherited conditions that are triggered by expansions in the DNA repeats of affected individuals. Currently, according to this article, it says that the DNA sequence, the expansions in the DNA sequence, is now known to be the root cause of about 40 different illnesses, and that these causal mutations drive the pathogenesis in a substantial number of these disorders. So some of these disorders could be anything from fragile X syndrome to spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy, Kennedy's disease, Huntington's disease. So some of these companies are getting involved not only in diagnostics, but they're trying to create, you know, treatments for them. So there's drug pipelines that they're currently looking at. And this is where the pharmaceutical companies will be making their money from either, you know, alleviating symptoms or trying to improve memory function in some of these diseases and just trying to improve some of these patients' lives. So I don't know what the actual market size is and I don't know how much diagnostics plays in that market size. But without diagnosis, you can't treat it. So... You do need diagnosis first and foremost. So yeah, it looks like this could be a juicy pipeline for bio-nanogenomics if optical genome mapping is used in diagnosis of these disorders and diseases. Next, let's add to that. On November the 2nd, 2022, eurotoday.com was talking about a study, a recent clinical trial, which utilized optical genome mapping. And they stated that optical genome mapping was able to identify clinically relevant genomic rearrangements in prostate cancer biopsy samples. So they ran this study and the study was quite small in terms of sample size. Now they're currently running a larger project that combines optical genome mapping and RNA sequencing to have a genome-wide view of structural variation affecting gene expression. Next, optical genome mapping is being used to actually map out part of the soursop genome. How do you know bio-nanogenomics is used? Because here you can see they use Illumina, 
They use 10x genomics, bio nano data, and high C sequencing to map out that genome. Next, we can see here that they were looking at cryptic balanced chromosomal rearrangements using optical genome mapping in China. They concluded by saying, to the best of their knowledge, this is the first study wherein optical genome mapping facilitated the rapid and robust detection of cryptic chromosomal reciprocal translocations in clinical practice. With excellent performance, our findings suggest that optical genome mapping is well qualified as an accurate, comprehensive, and first line method for detecting cryptic BCRs in routine clinical testing. Next, let's talk about this avian predator that they are mapping out. So they spoke about this region, the Quintai Tibet Plateau, QTP. It's a really cold climate like the Arctic, and it also has low oxygen concentrations as well as intense UV radiation, lots of ultraviolet light. So within the QTP, the Quintai Tibet Plateau, some of these animals have adapted to these extreme conditions and they want to find out whether or not they've got genetic variations from the Arctic during cold adaptation and how genomic mutations in non-coding regions regulate gene expression whilst they have low oxygen and high UV radiation. So these guys managed to use a multi-platform sequencing strategy, but they also use optical genome mapping. They use PacBio, Illumina and BioNano to map out the de novo assembly of the Seiko Falcon genome. Fun fact of the day as well, I want you to take a look at this. So this is an article from 2017, so fact check it, make sure you take a look. It's from Cleveland Museum of Natural History, 100 Years of Discovery is the website. So interesting enough, they were talking about this naked mole rat from Africa, the African naked mole rat, and they said the social structure of these mole rats are similar to workers, soldiers, and queens is a bit like insects rather than mammals. So the way that they move. They're also well known for their pain tolerance, high pain tolerance, longevity, long life, and virtual freedom from cancer. It will be a good genome to explore, I think. It shows that the naked mole rat can also survive for hours in extremely low oxygen environments and can live for as long as 18 minutes without no air at all. So they believe that if they continue to study it, the findings may eventually pay off in heart attack and stroke treatments. So I think they should definitely look into the genome and figure out about the naked mole rat and how it continues to survive in these kinds of environmental conditions. I found the article afterwards and it states that during anoxia, I found the article and it says that they survive 18 minutes with total oxygen deprivation without any injury as well, no apparent injury. And they said it's because they switched to anaerobic metabolism that is fueled by fructose which is accumulated and metabolized to lactate in the brain so yeah they stated this study would be really good to look at because it will help understand you know any low level oxygen damage hypoxic damage in human disease so when you have a stroke when you have a heart attack and you know some of your cells are dying what kind of treatments can they provide so bio nanogenomics has also been used to look at the chinese indigenous geese they want to look into the geese's genetics and evolution and you can see here they also utilize bio nanogenomics optical genome mapping now there's a very interesting workshop coming out and so this gentleman from the university of newcastle wants to take a look at optical genome mapping and have a comparison between it and long read sequencing for the identification of copy number variants and other genomic changes. And he stated that this study will talk about benefits and drawbacks of both optical genome mapping and long sequencing associated with the identification of copy number variants. They stated that these copy number variants are emerging as important factors in psychiatric and neurological disease genetics, but originally it plays a really important role in cancer where they say that, you know, cancer and copy number variants are considered to be a universal predictor for survival in cancer. So as you can see, people utilizing it for a lot of different research purposes, they're utilizing optical genome mapping, and some people believe that it's going to be very promising, and they can use it in diagnostics, first line treatment as well, first line diagnostics in the future. They said that it could happen. So they're saying that it looks promising, but they need more data, and they're going to continue researching to see if they can find out what are the best uses for optical genome mapping. All in the meantime, we're all waiting for adoption. We want to see Sapphire systems sold. We want to see them using more flow cells than ever, because that raises blades and razor model is how we generate our money i'm still waiting for it to come down in price i'm holding on to my oil stocks at the moment i haven't sold any but as soon as um my oil stocks i think they're going to be bought out if they're bought out by berkshire hathaway um occidental petroleum i'm going to take the entire amount of money there I'm going to wait for bio nanogenomics hopefully to come down in price over the next few quarters. There could be some economic conditions that could affect it as well. Say for the supply of flow cells, we don't know exactly where the flow cells are coming from. And if um, the people who produce and supply the flow cells are going to be affected if China and Taiwan were to have a altercation, a, a war. Um, if this was to happen and, and, you know, most of the semiconductor materials or coming from Taiwan, if this was to happen, um, is it going to affect the business for bio nanogenomics? 
and would it be temporary and how long will that last? So let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Please remember none of this is financial advice for entertainment only. I only tell you what I'm up to, what I want to be doing because I have an appetite for risk and um, I invested heavily in oil when the market crashed. Um, when genomics was crashing and lots of the small caps as well were coming down in price, I've been dollar cost averaging into buying nanogenomics and I'm currently up 40% at the moment. I was up as much as 80% I think in um, August and I believe that this company can do some amazing stuff. I really think that they're going to be able to get adoption and it's just my thoughts. It's not financial advice. These are just my thoughts and feelings um, and if they are to get adoption and they are to get Sapphire systems out into the world, I believe that the machine will be utilized for many different purposes, many different diseases, comorbidities and also to explore different markets. So there's going to research into maybe the non-human market in the future too. But for now, they're focused on cancer, particularly blood cancers, rare disease. So I'm wishing you guys a lovely day. If you enjoyed this video, please hit me with a thumbs up. Please hit the like, click subscribe. And um, if you want to send me any donations, there's a PayPal link in my description box below. Always remember, I'll never contact you on WhatsApp. So watch out for those scammers. I will never go on WhatsApp and uh, send you a number. So please don't get in contact with any of the scammers impersonating me. Wishing you a lovely day. Please remember none of this is financial advice for entertainment only and I'll catch you in the next video. Mr. Mr. Lot. Over and out. <coughs>